Yes, we got the body of the car repaired, delivered, and it looks amazing. But it, unless I can repair the engine, this whole project is basically a failure. So it's either going to cost too much to repair, it's going to blow through the budget, or in worst case scenario, I can even fix it. So in this episode, we are going to dive right into the engine, take everything apart that's damaged and see if there's any hidden damage. And the first thing we did long time ago was to use a really long 7 or 6 mil Allen, which is an Audi specialty tool to remove this bevel box, which I used to refer as the front differential. Afterwards, I've spent a lot of time cleaning the intake ports of this engine. Since this is a direct injected engine, they all suffer from really high carbon buildup. As you can see here on, on the valves and the intake ports. And all you need are some basic tools. I'm using a pick and some brushes and um, air comp compressor to blow up all of the debris and everything I have removed. And this should be really done as a regular maintenance since it is a regular issue on these engines. This was a very enjoyable part, at, at least to watch, because I was cleaning the mating surfaces, in this case oil cooler, with a really fine uh, uh, steel wire brush. This is very important, especially this part where the mating surface is for the water pump and there, this is where it usually leaks. So it's really important to get this thing really nice and clean. The front of the engine is done, so I continued working on disassembling gearbox from the engine block. There are a couple of screws that are really hard to access, but yeah, it was a struggle. You can see me pulling the whole table to the side in order to get those two to separate, but I did it. And this was the moment of truth. We finally got to see inside the engine and see if there are any hidden damages that we couldn't see from outside. As you can see, removing a plastic baffle plate. I don't think there's anything wrong with the oil pump. The oil pump seems to be undamaged so far. I need to get some detailed look at it but I think it looks okay. Um, 
Also, the baffle plate that we just removed, the plastic part, isn't damaged as well, so that's good news. What is damaged is obviously the oil pan, which has a gaping holes wherever you look at it, and it's most common issue with all of those plastic pieces. I, however, got a steel one as a replacement, so this one is going out. And I just need to, yeah. Also, we found a couple more pieces of the upper oil pan, which are um, clean, which means they just fell in. And other than that, oil pan and the oil itself looks really clean. So yeah, seems like the engine didn't suffer any major... Ooh, I'm too scared to say that. We're not going to say anything about engine because we still don't know whether this thing is going to work or not. Another Audi specialty tool is this counter hold for this screw which is insanely tight so you cannot do anything without it really. So the plan for now is after we remove the oil sum that was broken, the lower one, the upper one is also broken. In order to re remove that, we need to take the oil pump out. In order to take the oil pump out, which is chain driven, we need to make sure to remove this, this piece and everything on the front side of the engine, because that's where the chain is at. In order to do that, we need to put the engine in zero time and then lock it in place so nothing moves when we remove the chains. Good thing is we are replacing the chains, the tensioners and the guides for the chains anyway, whilst we are out there. So that's the good thing. And I've decided to do all of the services because the engine is out and I don't want to mess with anything in a couple of years or whatever when the engine is back in the car. So now we have it on the bench slash hoist thingy. We're going to replace everything that's serviceable on the engine and then we know the engine is good for a long time to come. So yeah, let's go strip the front end. It is really important to come prepared so well rested with a cup of coffee and some service manuals before you start working on the timing part of this engine. You can see here I'm starting to remove everything, labeling everything, so I know when I come back a couple of months or a couple of weeks later, I know where everything goes and how it goes. It is really important to note here that I'm using a really Audi specialty um, socket for those things and they are counter threaded. As you will see here, the way I'm uh, removing them is counter clockwise to tighten and clockwise to untighten.
Yeah, I was struggling with this part until I realized you have to hold it straight to pull it straight off the engine because it is a really tight tolerance. There are two marks on the cover, one is on 12 o'clock, so completely upwards, and that this one is the one that you are going to align with this wheel, you can see here right there, in order to get the timing set for this engine. so far from home It's like we're burning into embers But 
Present moons are all gone and home. We're all fired up, we're tangled up, we're enmeshed to the point we messed up. As the days keep rolling on, we're living in hell again. I still hold you in my arms when these days have been gone. Okay, so now that we have everything removed on the front side of the engine, and I hope you enjoyed that little video that I made, had a quite a few struggles to get um, around. I have also managed to um, remove the small tooth belt that drives the water pump without removing the counter uh, threaded screw over here and I mean you can wiggle the new belt in right back so I think that's a win-win even though without the transmission you have a clear access to this 12, mi 12 millimeter 12 millimeter bolt uh, to undo the sprocket I have successfully done uh, undone the belt without removing that so it might save you a lot of uh, a lot of time that being said we have now free access to the oil pump, which is still sitting in the upper oil pan. So what we now need to do is uh, lift the engine. So we have access to all of the bolts underneath and it is going to allow us to remove the up upper oil sump. Moving on with a nice pace, we are starting to remove the upper oil sump, which is held on by a 14 screws. And you really need to mark where each of them came out of because they are different. As the days keep rolling on, we're living in hell again. But I still hold you in my heart when these days have been gone. We have a good news after all. The engine is fixable and we can proceed to bring this Audi TT back on the road. And as it was getting late and I was alone in my garage working, I realized just how happy and thankful I am for the opportunity to do exactly what I love. And you, for many people it's going to look like I'm just struggling to to repair something i'm actually enjoying myself to the fullest 
and I hope this video is going to inspire at least a couple of guys or girls to try um, rebuilding a car or doing some other project that you're really passionate about and love because it is not at all so complicated and even though it looks like a struggle from time to time you will really be happy that you tried. So it looks like after all we will be able to repair this engine so yeah if you enjoyed watching me tear this thing down and um, see how much damage it was you will probably enjoy the next episode even more because we are going to put a truckload of new parts back onto the engine and try to put it back together just the way it was from the factory so if you'd like to see this please consider subscribing as the next video will be coming out really soon so thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one bye